Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Sorrentino. Here. Alderman Jacob. Here. Alderman Woods. Here. Alderman Sismarski. Here. Alderman Roy Wesley. Alderman Eugene Wesley. Here. Alderman Catalano. Here. Alderman Messina. That passes. Uh, make a motion to approve the minutes from August 8th. So move. Second. Any, any questions, changes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Next, uh, report a recommendation. Approval of the special use major site plan review and tax amendment to the UDO for case number 2019-CDC-07 and 08 for motor vehicle repair at 855 Lively Boulevard. And Mr. Cage, you'll be talking about this? Yes, thank you, okay. uh, Chairman. Thank so, you. Um, this is a case that went to um, CDC uh, September, ah, perfect. September the 16th, um, uh, obviously a public hearing, obviously it was posted uh, and noticed. So essentially, just to kind of clarify location-wise, obviously you can see the site highlighted um, in the middle, it's halfway up lively. Um, obviously central public works down to the, if I can get the right button here, oh, uh, public works down here, just to kind of orientation. Um, obviously central coming up here, lively, here is the site right here, highlighted, uh, 855. Um, and really kind of the crux of the issue is 855, obviously right here where it says site. These boundaries, the red boundary is the um, uh, corporate main street. And obviously, you know, I, I don't want to reiterate it uh, too much, I know the um, the committee is well aware of the Thorndale Corridor overlay. This this portion obviously is the corporate main street that was planned back in um, the Lakota plan of 2009-2010. Uh, obviously you can see the site itself is right on the cusp of that. So um, essentially what the, uh, what the request is, it's um, really <coughs> twofold. Um, First one being a uh, text amendment because in the corporate main street, uh, motor vehicle repair uh, is not permitted um, under the current uh, code. Um, so the text amendment would essentially allow uh, motor vehicle repair as a special use. Um, and then the second portion of the, um, of the application is then the special use uh, and the major site plan review. So. Um, with that, at the CDC held a, a public meeting, um, public hearing, I should say, uh, just to kind of, from an orientation standpoint, uh, this is a picture of the front of the building um, from slightly to the north, um, and then moving on, obviously, access to the back of the property, um, 855 Lively, and then just to kind of run through a couple of things, and then um, I'll stop talking if anyone has any questions. Uh, essentially, CDC recommended approval uh, five to one. Um, now, I would kind of cast your mind back to um, this is an area that uh, I know we've talked about recently, uh, as recent as August, that the um, um, we're doing a study uh, with a consultant to uh, review parts of the UDO, and obviously the Thorndale Corridor overlay is going to be one of those parts. Um, and then I just would p point out that obviously that's something we talked about in August of this year, and then this application came in in July, so it was just prior to that. So um, with that very brief kind of introduction, uh, I'll stop talking. If anyone has any questions, I will attempt to answer them. Anyone have any questions? Let's go back to just down. And what was staff's recommendation on this? Um, so, um, excellent question. So, the it's a complicated issue because it's something that we are aware of is an issue that's outstanding. The uh, go well, ahead. Let me clarify. Um, my memo does not recommend approval, and I'll summarize it very briefly. Um, currently, right now, um, a text amendment would allow 
other uses to go in the corporate main street as it stands, covered in this red area with a special use for auto or motor vehicle repair. The corporate main street did not allow that type of use because, as you will all recall, that's the study, and you see the, the nice picture that we have next door. We're aiming for um, the dream or the, the goal um, was a lofty goal. Um, Multi-story buildings, uh, corporate main street, offices, hotels, restaurants. Um, so the text amendment, which would change the would affect all the ability of all these properties in Corporate Main Street to get a special use for motor vehicle repair. Um, I do not recommend approval, and one of the reasons I do not recommend approval is because, obviously, after this application was submitted, we have engaged a consultant to study this area. Thank you. Uh, Mayor? Yeah, just so we're clear on the, the study, the TESCA revisions is mostly to clean up some language like we had somebody coming in with a building, brand new building, and they needed 200 and some odd spots. The original codes was like 104. They put in 140, which was over the original code for some reason. There's 200 parking spots, so we're looking to clean those types of things up. Correct. I don't think we were studying uses, correct? Mr. Cage? Uh, excellent point, Mayor. Yes, the, we know there are some modifications that we need to make in the UDO. Parking clearly is one of them. Um, that's a study that we've engaged, but is, you know, we've engaged the consultant, um, but that's going to be coming, uh, I think, back to this very committee later in the year. Um, but there's many parts to that. This, you know, an application comes in, the applicants made the application in July. You know, we have a time frame in the code that says that we have to process it accordingly, uh, and that's essentially why we're, why we're here. So there's two parts. One is the text amendment to create or to allow auto, uh, motor vehicle repair as a special use, and then um, the second part would be the actual special use of the site plan review. So basically, if we're allowing one, that means down the road we're going to have to allow more eventually, correct? Um, to answer your question, if the text amendment is approved, then you have the ability for more applications to come in for a similar type of use. Yes, correct. Alderman E. Wesley. So I'm going to, rec I'm going to bring up a point. Why don't we just wait until that study comes back? I mean, let's see what it's all about because there might be other stuff we might have to change up there too. So my motion will be to table this until the study is completed. I would actually second. I would actually second that motion. I mean, um, do, uh, uh, if you could. Go to the podium. Normally, we don't allow people to speak, but since you are here, I, on their behalf, I um, just. Well, here, here's here's the reason for the speaking. This this building would uh, is not suitable. Name and address. I'm sorry. My, I I beg your pardon. My name is Ronald Cope, C O P E. I'm an attorney representing the owners of 885 Lively. With me tonight is a a land planner who worked on this and presented reports. I'd like to just start by two things. One, your planning department specifically recommended approval. If you look at the report that uh, she put forth, it spells out several things. Uh, first, we satisfy all the criteria for granting the text amendment. We did that. Second of all, we satisfy all the criteria for granting a special use. The Thorndale Corridor plan, which calls for hotels, retail establishments, couldn't possibly work on this site. It's a building that's been used for the last over 20 years for repairing vehicles inside the building. It couldn't, it's not big enough to be a hotel. It can't fit in with any retail. It's a closed building. Uh, you'd be basically putting these people out of business. Uh, that's the reason that it's so important to get this approval now. 
And the fact that it's a special use means that if in areas where you think uh, in the future you might be able to put a hotel or you might be able to put a restaurant, you can, you can approve or not approve the special use, but that's the reason it was qualified as a special use. In addition, this is an industrial zone property. Your underlying zoning is the I-1 industrial. This is a use that's permitted in the I-1 industrial, so that in terms of the underlying zoning, it is permitted. Third of all, your comprehensive plan came after the 2009 study, and the comprehensive plan recognizes the need for industrial use and further industrial use. On either side of this building is trucks and truck repairs. The folks who actually operate businesses in this area have trucks. They need the trucks repaired. Uh, this, this building is really very limited in terms of its use to wait until, I, I know Tesca, they're a fine group, but it's going to take months for them to complete any study. And as far as I know, you already went through a study when you did that Thorndale Corridor, and you more recently did an update on your comprehensive plan, which was a very good thing for you to do, very worthy of you to do. And that comprehensive plan indicates that this area should be used for industrial uses. Uh, our planner, Mr. Leonard, is here, and he could talk to you in more detail about it. But you'd be basically taking this property away from these people. They can't ever, they, can't, they will never be able to use it for a restaurant. They'll never be able to use it for a hotel. And they'll never be able to use it for office buildings. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. No, you could continue. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, but I thought uh, the mayor wanted to ask me Mayor, something. did you want to hold off or do I, do I want to say something else? Basically, Peter, you already have a motion and a second to table. You just need to take that roll call and- Well, if you do that, then we can't, I'm sorry. And, and besides, we don't have the city attorney here to answer some of these questions that the gentleman's providing at the moment, so. But anyways, you have a motion and a second for table, so you should see what happens <coughs> with the table. Okay. Um, roll call, please. Alderman Sorrentino? No. Alderman Jacob? No. Alderman Woods? No. Alderman Sismarski? No. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? No. Okay, that fails. Okay. Mr. Chairman or Mr. Mayor, I don't know if you want me to go on, but we do have a, a planner to answer. I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, just one question, Mr. Oh, this is Alderman Sorrentino, go ahead. Well, thank you, sir. When you said she approved, the, who was she? I'm talking about the, your planner. You have a planning department. Uh, in order to start this whole process, we had to go through your planning department. We had to answer a whole long series of questions. You know who you spoke to? Gosha, um, yes, I do know. I was just curious. You uh, said 2009. No, no, this was not in 2009. Your, uh, this was 2019 when we uh, did our application. Okay. The, um, the person, I can't pronounce her last name, but it's spelled P-O-C-I-E-C-H-A. She I is she, she's your planner. Okay. And I she, apologize. I heard 2009. Well, I, I got to tell you, no need to apologize. Sometimes I do not speak that clearly. <laughs> and I don't make myself uh, understood clearly, so I'm the one who should apologize to you. Thank you. But in any event, I would, I would like you to hear from our planner. I don't know uh, this gentleman whose recommendation uh, you're listening to. I never saw any report from him. I only saw the report from your planner. We had a long drawn out hearing before the CDC. They heard all of the evidence. Uh, they heard the arguments, whatever they were. But when you have a long planning report, which takes into consideration all of the points that uh, are needed in order to satisfy a text amendment, and she acknowledges that we satisfied all of that, and when, she, uh, when we had to present all of the evidence that satisfied the special use requirements, it would seem to me that we've done what has to be done in order to get you to approve but it would be absolutely wrong to put these people out of business. You'd be basically taking their property. They, you can just look at the pictures. 
uh, if they put them back up, there's this is only a 60 foot frontage. You couldn't use this as a hotel. There's no, there, you couldn't use it as a restaurant. It can't serve as an office building. It couldn't serve for any of those uses in the, uh, on the Thorndale plan. And after the Thorndale plan, you had your comprehensive plan updated, which basically contradicts much of the Thorndale plan. And as I've st stated to you before, because it would be a special use, if you actually came to an area here where you thought it could be an office building, or you thought it could be a restaurant, or you thought it could be a hotel, you don't have to approve the special use. That's the whole idea of doing it as a special use. It's a protection for the community. It's a protection for the city. Uh, so uh, I, I just appeal to you not to put these people out of business. That, that really would be wrong. It's uh, tough enough to make a living in this kind of a climate. Okay, uh, Alderman Sorrentino has another question. Just a couple uh, of questions. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that they've been in business there 20 years? This, they're 20 years of repairing. There was a, a company called Snowlift that was a tenant in there. Snowlift, before Snowlift, there was another truck repair business. Okay. That, that started it. And then Snowlift was in there for approximately 10 years they did the snow removal, a lot of the snow removal with their trucks at O'Hare Airport. The trucks were brought back here to be repaired. So they were repairing their own vehicles. They, exactly. They were repairing, but it's always been truck repair. The fellow that's looking at it now is going to repair others' vehicles? Yes, he's going to repair ve vehicles generally, trucks generally. And there's a lot of trucks in this area. If you drive through it, you'll see there's an enormous number of trucks. In fact, it just common sense tells you when I went out there. Alderman yeah. Sorrentino, I'm sorry. Yes, I appreciate it. No, time. please. When this process began, uh, we have a uh, policy and procedure that would include an application for a uh, business license. Was that fulfilled? I believe that we did. Uh, and they told us we had to go through the zoning process because the old, the, the prior tenant left they left when they lost the contract at O'Hare. Uh, but uh, these guys did apply, and they told us to go through, and so we started the zoning process. They, they thought, look, here's what they thought. I mean, maybe common sense, they didn't, that as far as they were concerned, when they saw this building, they saw trucks being repaired in it. Mm -hmm. So they figured it was a no-brainer. They would take over the property and continue to repair trucks. So they came in and asked for the permit, and the permit people said, well, wait a minute, they were repairing their own trucks, you want to repair trucks, but you know I, I analogize this to O'Hare's and the uh, you know you and I or some of you fly on United and American. Nobody's going to tell American Airlines that repairing their planes is not part <laughs> of the business. It's obviously part of the principal business, and this is part of the principal business. But I didn't argue. We didn't argue with them. We went through the process. We did everything, uh, and we did get the approval. Alderman Sorrentino asked one more question. That's okay. Uh, that's okay. Thank Did you. Did you represent I, this tenant at the onset? No, I didn't, I'm representing the owner of the building, okay. uh, not the tenant. All right. Because I'm, I'm used to seeing contingencies and uh, acceptance prior to rent beginning. That's where this business license and this contingent could have been maybe saved us all a lot of Well, money. maybe, except for the fact that if it's not this tenant, they have no other possibilities. You can't use this building for anything else. What could you use it for? It's not going to be an office building. It's not going to be a restaurant. It's not going to be a hotel. So you basically have closed down the building. You've cut off any rent to the building. The, the man still has to pay property taxes on the building. He has no rent coming in. And as far as the world is concerned, if they looked at this building, it would look exactly the same. They'd still be repairing trucks. Okay, so, so I'm going to let Mr. Cage, who's our community development director, that's Thank the person you said yeah. you weren't sure who he was. Yeah, let me clarify. We'll let my my Mr. name is Ed Cage. Cage. I'm the community development director. Gosha Pachetta is the planner who works in community development. The staff reports that we write for the CDC all have a positive recommendation and then it's down to the CDC whether they take, they act, they vote on the positive and they can vote to deny it. So to characterize the planner's recommendation as we were approving it is incorrect. So going back to my next point, we 
acknowledge and understand this as an issue in the corporate main street, which is why we've engaged a consultant to study it. So to say that these buildings, yes, clearly, these buildings cannot be restaurants, they cannot be office uses, which is exactly why we're going back to the flawed, in my opinion, study from 2010, which is exactly why we're going back to re-examine that and to clarify it. So the applicant has gone through the process as directed by staff, and this is the next step after the public hearing. But let me be crystal clear. Staff, and I talk to uh, Ms. Pachetta every day, I've talked to them many times about this application. If she was sitting here now, she would clarify that she did not recommend approval, because if she did recommend approval, that would be counter to every single conversation that we had. And all the staff reports that we write, the motion is reflected in the staff report as a positive motion, and then it's down to the CDC whether they accept it or not. And another point to make that was, um, has been glossed over is that it was not a unanimous vote by the CDC. And also, I know the committee and the council are very clear on the Thorndale Corridor overlay because we've talked about it recently and we've talked about it many times. The CDC are not probably as current as the committee and the council because that's when we, when we came before you in August to talk about studying the UDO and because we had an application uh, or request to analyze the Thorndale Corridor overlay, that's not something that went to the CDC. So just to clarify. Well, I think points. to clarify okay. what the clarification. Excuse me. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, Alderman Woods. Yeah. I want to make a motion to approve the special use major site plan review and text amendment to the UDO case number 2019-CDC07 and 08 for motor vehicle repair at 855 Lively Boulevard. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, well, thank you for your comments. We appreciate it. But uh, like I said, normally we do, we do not have the attorney here, as the mayor did point out. And uh, you know, we have a motion and a second. So thank you. Appreciate thank you. your comments. Roll call, please. Alderman Sorrentino? No. Alderman Jacob? No. Alderman Woods? No. Alderman Sismarski? No. Alderman Eugene Wesley? No. Alderman Catalano? No. So, if I, I know passes. I don't have the floor, but I'd like to clarify something. Uh, your planner indicated we satisfied every single one of the requirements. What, your, what Mr. Gates has said is that she didn't recommend because they recommend approval. But if you look at the report, you'll see that she said we satisfied every requirement. It makes no sense to engage in litigation, but what you've done is to take this property, and I will see to it that you have to pay this man for his property. So you can take it or leave it, but I think what you've done is a dastardly thing to put a man out of business for the possibility of okay. Tesca and Associates sometime in the future coming up with a okay, report. Sir, that's enough. Thank you very much. Alderman Woods? No, it's okay. Uh, no comment. Um, <clears throat> items be considered at future meetings. UDO Tesca revisions, December 12th. Recreational marijuana, December 12th. Uh, Mayor, you have something to add? Yeah, Jeff, can we do that recreational marijuana in November? Why do we got to wait till December? Mr. Marmis? Uh, that has to go to CDC. C-A-G. It has to go to CDC first, so we have to oh, follow okay. timing for that. All right. Anybody else have any? Okay. With that, I make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Okay, I'd like to bring the Public Works Committee to uh, the order. Um, let's make a note that uh, the, uh, still the same council members are present. And I'd like to approve the minutes for September 12, 2019 for Public Works Committee meetings. Uh, that, that's my motion. Any corrections? 
No corrections? Motion carries. Report and recommendation. Wait, all in favor? Yeah, I did. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Aye. All in favor. I forgot the aye. Go ahead. Aye. aye. All right. <laughs> okay, next is uh, approval of final payment to Utility Dynamics Corporation for the Division Street Lighting Project in the amount not to exceed $16,237.35. That is my motion. Second. All in favor? What? Oh, I'm sorry, any questions? questions oh, yeah, that's right. right. Any questions? No questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes, and uh, motion carries. Okay, next is uh, the presentation of street sufficiency study by Baxter and Woodman. Go ahead, Mr. Flores. Thank you, uh, Chairman Catalano, uh, Catalano, sorry, and members of the committee. Uh, first off, just wanted to say that, um, you know, we as Baxter and Woodman really appreciate uh, the council and the committee trusting us to complete this report. You know, I, I uh, was the project manager on this study and also the one back in 2011. So. Uh, and worked on some other projects around that time too, so it's really good to be back in town. So I've got about a 15 or 20 minute presentation um, just to talk about the study and some of the results. I'd be happy to answer as many questions as you might have afterward. Um, so really four main things I wanna go over as part of the street sufficiency study. Um, what is pavement management and why is it important? I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because um, the city has completed several of these studies, so I know, it's, I know that you guys understand the importance of it. So I'll talk about the data collection method and our evaluation, uh, the street sufficiency study and the results, and then talk briefly about some future planning for road rehabilitation and management. So what is pavement management and why is it important? Your pavement management essentially is inventorying all of your streets, evaluating uh, the needs for your streets, coming up with a plan and estimating the costs for those improvements, um, creating that plan and implementing it, measuring the success of the plan and some of the rehabilitation techniques that you're implementing, and then adjusting as necessary. I'm sure many of you have seen this um, graph before. This is. I think this graph really captures the essence of pavement management. And what it is, is it, it shows the pavement life cycle. Um, as you can see, a, a street, uh, the left side illustrates the condition of a street, and the uh, bottom uh, illustrates the year. So you can see it's not a linear relationship. As a street um, degrades, you know, it, it, there's a precipitous drop in condition and cost of a street after it, it gets past a fair condition. So it's really um, in the, it's in everybody's best interest to be improving streets in this range, the fair condition range. That's where you're getting the best bang for your buck. And that's why preventive maintenance, crack filling, patching and, and resurfacing are really your most economical way. And that's how you stay ahead of the game and trying to maintain uh, for, for many communities, what is their, their biggest asset and biggest liability? Um, so for this study, we um, captured images, uh, geo-referenced images with a camera. Um, I'm sure some of you guys probably saw our truck driving around town this summer. Um, the, the neat thing about the collection system is, as I said, these pictures are all geo-referenced. They can all be uploaded to the GIS website. You can click on photos of every street and, and look at the condition and the rating and the estimated cost associated with it. Here's an example of what um, those images look like. This is from Potter Street. So after we had all of these photos, then we could evaluate all of the, uh, the conditions of all of the streets, assign a rating to them. We used what's called the PASER rating system for this study. Uh, this is a nationally recognized rating system that was developed by University of Wisconsin-Madison. What it is, it's a one through 10 rating, and it assigns a rating, one being the worst and 10 being the best, based on the type of uh, failures that you see uh, on the surface of the road. 
And within all of those one through 10 ratings, those are, those are associated with a type of maintenance. Um, we were careful to select the type of maintenance activities that, that are appropriate for the city streets and uh, the types of rehabilitation techniques that the city employs. Um, you know, it doesn't do any good if we're recommending uh, strategies that the city doesn't employ. We're very careful to make sure that um, these, are, these strategies make sense and they're proven and they've been used by the city before. So as you can see, you know, pavements in the 8, 9, 10 category, those are relatively new pavements. Um, as you start to deteriorate, deteriorate a little bit, you start to get into the crack ceiling and preventive maintenance and the patching. Um, and then down in the three and four is when you look at resurfacing and finally one and two uh, reconstruction. Um, so there's what I would like to refer to as the three R's of pavement re rehabilitation. The right time, the right strategy, and the right street. If you don't have the right rehabilitation technique on the right street, depending on the condition that you're seeing, um, it's really not a good use of your dollars. So what were the results of the study? So I know this is probably a little bit difficult to see here, but uh, I know you've got the reports in your packets and, and we'll, we'll provide some hard copies as well afterwards. Um, but you can kind of see here, uh, this is a color-coded map of all of the PASER ratings. Uh, generally speaking, the blues and the greens are pavements that are in pretty good condition and the pavements in, um, that are red, pink, and orange uh, generally need a lot of work. Those are in poor condition. The total cost of all the repairs is pr approximately $15 million. If you were to make every repair that's needed out there today, we wouldn't recommend that approach, um, but that is what the, the dollar amount is. Um, our recommended annual budget for the city is uh, $2.5 million. And that's based on a 15 to 20 year life cycle of pavements. That would mean that if you were spending that much, you would be real rehabilitating streets on about a 15 to 20 year cycle. Here's a graphic uh, further breaking down the PASER uh, rating system of one through 10. You can, you can see that the majority of the streets are in good, very good and excellent condition. However, um, there is a fair amount percentage-wise of streets in that one to four range. And of course, those are the most costly streets to repair. So that's what's making up the majority of that $15 million. The average PASER rating across all of the streets is 5.4 out of 10, or a fair condition. What are some future, some future planning that the city could take on for some of this rehabilitation maintenance? So we came up with a five-year plan um, based on the budget numbers from the CIP. Now this is just a recommended plan. In general, what we tried to do is take streets in the four, five, six category range where you know, that's where the most opportune time and the best uh, bang for your buck dollars. So we tried to uh, target as many of those streets as possible. Now, we can't ignore the streets that are in very poor condition or failed in one, one or two. We have to sprinkle in some of those. Um, you know, but in general, your dollars are better spent attacking streets in more of the fair condition. So with that being part, one of our uh, guiding principles, and then we also tried to group streets um, together as much as we could. Uh, it doesn't always work out as you look into to all of the years. Um, and, and then we tried to, tried to balance at least somewhat um, spending money in the different wards. Um, that wasn't our primary uh, goal, uh, but it was a secondary goal to make sure uh, that we did spread the, much, spread the money uh, somewhat evenly. Now that said, with that map, there are a lot of other streets in fair condition that if the city chooses to move some of those streets around for whatever reason, if there's some other projects in the area or other reasons that it just makes sense to move things around. I don't think there's anything uh, magical or, or should be considered in stone with what this five-year plan represents. Uh, so in addition to the, um, the budget from the CIP for the rehabilitation, uh, we also included $135,000 for annual maintenance. That's for crack filling and patching. 
I think that's a, a very um, ambitious number for the, for the amount of mileage that the city has. And I commend you for, for spending that much on preventive maintenance, because like I said, your best bang for your buck is in the crack filling and your patching. If you can extend the life of those pavements and kind of bend that rehabilitation curve, that's really your best dollar spent. You know, uh, and then looking at the CIP numbers, you know, a little bit under a million dollars is what you're spending annually. I know I previously uh, mentioned that, that we recommend about two and a half million dollars, but I know that the city is undertaking some very ambitious um, capital improvement projects uh, with the storm sewer projects. And there's also roadway improvements associated with those. Um, so what we did is we tried to monetize the roadway portion of that work to kind of get a true picture of what you're really spending on roads. And so with that, we think the city's spending closer to $1.7 million a year. So closer to that $2.5 million that, that we recommend. Uh, so finally, what I want to, one thing I want to touch on is um, the STP call for projects that's administered by the DuPage Mayors and Managers Conference. There hasn't been a call for project, it, projects in a few years as CMAP redoes the methodology for the scoring system. Um, but there is going to be a call in January, and this um, federal program is for federal aid eligible streets. The, that, that doesn't represent all of the streets in the city, obviously. These are arterials and collector streets that are gonna be eligible for this funding. But this is another way that the city can kind of bridge the gap uh, between what it should be spending and what it is spending. Uh, so what I, I show here over on the left is um, the category, the scoring categories that the Mayors and Managers Conference is going to be um, evaluating projects based on safety, project readiness, uh, average traffic, pavement condition, local needs, financial commitment, um, and a few other things. Uh, as part of that new methodology um, by CMAP, uh, CMAP actually rated all of the federal aid eligible streets across the entire Chicagoland area in anticipation for this next call for projects kind of so that all communities were on a level playing field. Everybody's got different pavement management reports and different rating systems, so trying to get everybody on an even playing field. Um, so what you see here is the rating system of the federal aid eligible streets in the city. Uh, these were taken by CMAP, and these are the ratings that'll be used um, as part of the scoring system for STP. So looking back at that point system that I had shown a couple slides before, um, we looked at what we thought were the, the best projects to bring forth for that STP funding. Um, and it seems like Foster, Central, and Middle might be the best opportunity to capture some of those STP dollars. You know, Foster obviously has the highest ADT. Um, the PCI is in poor condition. Um, then going back here, one other thing I wanted to point out um, is the project readiness. Uh, that represents 15 points out of 100. So what that is, uh, if the city wanted to be proactive and get a project, not quite shovel ready, but close to shovel ready, getting the preliminary engineering complete, that's a, that's a way that the city could uh, capture some additional points prior to that call for project. So just wanted to kind of to point that out as a way that the city could better position itself when that call for projects comes out. And again, kind of bridge the gap between um, the funding for the um, improvements. In that same vein, um, one thing I forgot to point out is on this five-year plan, what you'll see is the dashed lines, and those are for uh, Foster, Central, and Middle. Um, so we included those in um, different fiscal years. Obviously, we don't know if those streets would get funded, and if they are, what year they are. But we wanted to include those as um, possible streets to include in a five-year plan. Now, if the city were to be selected for that funding, its responsibility would be about 20% of the total cost of the project. Um, so then that would be a good case where, or a good example of, the five-year plan would need to be modified 
Um, and so we identified some streets within the five-year plan, if it were selected in that year, to get pushed out to some out years to make room for that 20% if the village captures that funding. So in conclusion, um, the average village street rating is 5.4 on a 10, 10 point scale or a fair condition. Total cost of all improvements is approximately $15.8 million. The five year plan established based on a budget of approximately 950,000, um, which includes the resurfacing and the maintenance budget. We encourage the city to apply for some SDP funds for the federal aid eligible streets. Um, and again, continue with the aggressive budget for the preventive maintenance to slow the overall system deterioration. So that's all I have. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, so a question on the, the poor, the ones that are rated number one. When are those going to be uh, implemented? Those are going to be taken care of? Go ahead. Yeah, typically what we do is we don't need, we're not looking for any guidance tonight. What we wanted Mr. Floor to come in for is kind of more explain how we do it, more so for the residents at home. What we do is we take this document and then internally on a staff level, we kind of map out with whatever funding level we have on a given year and maybe what other construction projects we have in any given area on a certain year. And we kind of come up with a menu uh, for the council to decide on during the CIP process. So we don't take what's in this report uh, verbatim tonight what we do is we kind of internally map it out together, bring it to you guys, and then you guys kind of map it out as part of the CIP process. Okay. And also you guys are going out for any state funding if there's any out there? Yeah, we've applied for SDP funds before, so anytime there's grant funds available, mm -hmm. we typically would apply, and whatever engineering firm is usually doing the design work sometimes helps uh, supply And also, well. one more last question. Um, one of our streets, a neighbor in Itasca, and that, that street is in bad shape, but we reaching out to them to see, go ahead. Yeah, typically when we have a street that's within two jurisdictions, we will partner up. We just did that on Mill Road not too many years ago okay. where a certain municipality pays one percentage and then the other pays another. So that's not uncommon for us to partner with either a township or another municipality. Thank you. Any question? Any other questions? The mayor? Oh, I'm sorry. Good. Good. Alderman. I, so <laughs> the ones in the red is the worst shape, right? Correct. So let's go back to a meeting that we had that we resurfaced the street on Forest Reserve Drive patchwork well guess what guys from Mill Road to Prospect it's a red yeah. that was this was done before yes go ahead I'm sorry All right and as Jason said uh, part of the reason we do preventative maintenance is to extend the life of those streets and I think it emphasizes why we do a street sufficiency study, because if we had had the results of this prior to this, we might have made decisions differently. But that road was in such particularly poor condition that we felt it was necessary to, to take some preventative maintenance steps now. So, may I? Go ahead. So my, my question now, so even though it's red now, just because we patched the job, how bad is the base on it? If, if, if it's in red, isn't it the base that's bad under there too? Go ahead. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons for a road to fail. Certainly, you know, bad base is a, is one of the top reasons. Um, you know, th thin pavement. You know, there's there's a lot of different ways. So when you, good. I'm sorry, when you did the study on these roads that are in the red, was a base tested on it? No, that wasn't part of the study. This was a surface, uh, a visual visualization of the surface. So so. My, my question back here then, so we need to go back there and test that base because if that base is bad and it's a zero to one, maybe we should hold off on repaving patchwork until we had to study back then. I mean, but now it's a red. That's why I was trying to tell you guys, we're gonna end up digging it up. Director Lang. Right, I think as uh, City Manager Merma said, we, we take this internally and then we make our decisions on a street by street basis later on. I mean, to go out and take core samples of every street in town would just not be very cost effective so I mean it's something we're gonna look at in the future and uh, as Jason said some of those one and two rated streets we try to sprinkle those in with the uh, the four and five to really get the best bang for our buck Alderman Woods
speaker. I apologize. Anyway, Reader's Digest version. We've been doing the same thing for 15 years now. The same, same process. Mayor? Right. Again, so we had four streets that we patched. We've only got so much money, and that's why we do the streets efficiency study. I, I'm looking at this Appendix 4. There's three, six. These are all ones, right? Seven. Seven streets. Is that correct? Those are all the ones? Is that what I'm gathering, or is this just a continuation of the two above? There's two more ones there also. It's, it's probably a continuation, right, because it's on the next page. So I'm looking at all the ones. All the streets that are rated with the number one rating you're right. looking at? That's the last. Okay, so Elmwood and Windsor, Potter Street, I think that's a dead end, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Maple, Sunnyside, right to the end, right? Yeah, so, I, I see. So all the ones on the bottom on this next page, I mean, I could tell you right now, Roy Drive from uh, Apollo Court to Robin Lane and uh, Walter Drive to Robin Lane, all Roy Drive. I think that's where we've been having a lot of water main breaks mm -hmm. and whatnot, but we have, I know we didn't check the water mains. This is not part of the study either, same thing. So as we get to these streets, that's when we have to make those decisions. And we try not to waste money if we can, but you see, you see the, the amounts that we're talking about. Alderman, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Members. Yeah, I think uh, Alderman Wesley, Alderman Woods, Mayor Police all make good points. Uh, the street stuff that we do is not really an exact science, though, because we could, for example, if we have uh, Ward 2 streets along the creek that are put in on the same day as some streets uh, over by Alderman Wesley's house in Ward 4, those streets over by the creek, while you may think they're going to last the same amount of time because we have the overtopping of stormwater sometimes, they deteriorate much quicker. There's some streets in your ward in Ward 1 that are constantly underneath shade like Montrose Avenue with a lot of moisture in the asphalt over there too. They age quicker. Or a particular route may be traveled by more trucks than another route. There's all sorts of factors and there could be a construction project that we know is forthcoming, a water main project, and we could let a street deteriorate a little bit more to line it up with the water main project to save dollars. So while we use this as a guide, there's so many variables each year. That's, that's why we talk about it every year. And we readjust one year in the out years in the CIP. We may think we're doing the street. And then when it comes to that next year, we may have to reevaluate based on another water main project or the surface of another street that drops uh, quicker than we thought it would drop. Go ahead, Mayor. And just to address Owen Wesley's concerns is, you know, we don't want to be patching and then the next year be repaving, but we don't know that until we do the study, number one, but either we continue with some patching or we get rid of patching altogether, which will create a different problem for us. So, I mean, we're kind of, there's some things you just cannot avoid. Go ahead. Yeah, I was actually joking with uh, Alderman Jacob the other day. One of the common complaints we always get from residents when they find out their street is being patched they're excited at first because they're always complaining that they want their, something done with their street they want to patch. Then when we patch it, then they complain because, well, you patched it, now it's going to lengthen the time before we get a whole new road. And there's complaints about that. So either way I look at it, as a, it it's kind of everybody's always yelling at me for, for road programs. Alderman Jacob. Okay, so a <clears throat> couple questions. So we do the street sufficiency study how often? Maybe five years. Go ahead. Every five years, we okay. try to include so it. I, I guess my biggest complaint is two weeks ago, we just repaved streets. Montclair is on here. We repaved 997 feet of it. So every five years in the future, I would say we should hold off on, re, on doing the patching because now we have a street that's a one that we just spent money on, and now the taxpayers are going to have to pay more money to totally redo that street eventually. I'm not saying to stop uh, the patching, but at least on the year when we're doing this study, we should hold off or get the study done a little bit earlier 
So maybe we could have come up with some kind of game plan for, for instance, Montclair or any other street on here that's in that condition. Go ahead. Uh, I would add that, that you know, I wasn't privy to the patching program, um, but even though um, some streets may, that are rated one or two may have been patched, that's ultimately not gonna avoid them from being resurfaced, obviously, but it may prevent further deterioration of the base course. It may prevent uh, an ultimate reconstruction. It could keep the road at a resurface as opposed to a reconstruction. So while I don't think, uh, there's obviously a point of diminishing returns of patching a roadway, um, but I, I don't necessarily think patching a road that's in poor condition is, is money wasted. Follow up, uh, Alderman Jacob. I guess just my final comment would be, I think if, again, if we're doing this once every five years, in the future, I would rather hold off on, re, on the fifth year when we're doing the study, either A, get the study done earlier, or B, hold off on the patching that year and use that money for, that we're saving on the patching for the following year to fix streets up. Alderman Woods. Yeah, first I want to categorically deny ever yelling at Mr. Mermis for <laughs> streets. Uh, it wasn't you. To be included in everyone. But to, to uh, Alderman Wesley and Alderman Jacob, I, I, I get what you're saying, but if you hold off one year prior to the five year, it takes another year to get things in the cycle, so you're wasting two years. That being said, let's go back to three months ago, four months ago, or a year ago when everybody comes in here complaining about the streets in their ward and want those things patched because everybody's yelling at them, right? We're, we're kind of forgetting the fact that we're the drivers anyway of, of the patching. You know, most of the complaints come in. We, we, we bring it to city council or to the city manager. We, we get it into the program to get it done. I understand not wasting money, but as Jason uh, pointed out, there's other considerations in, involved and prolonging the life of the road, even though on the outside it looks like maybe potentially you wasted money because you patched it and two years later you ground it up. But that patching it and waiting the two years to grind it up could amend the difference of grind and resurface versus complete reconstruction of half the road. I think that was the point that the engineers were making. Mayor? Thank you. Yeah, and just so, just looking at this map, ball parking in the ones we've got over six thousand six thousand feet right length and pretty close in the number twos we got six thousand feet that's twelve thousand feet of road i'm going to say this is going to be this if we did them all at once right because we want to be nice guys this this number is going to put our budget we're not going to have any money Right. Correct. As yeah, Jason said, those are the most expensive streets to, to repair when they get right. down to that failed and, rating. And, and we need to do something, but unfortunately, there's like probably 15 to 20 streets here. We're not, and if I remember right, every time we do at least a full length, I think it's somewhere around, depending how it works out in the length, 250 to 500,000. So, I mean, even at 250,000 a street, We've got over $5 million here for one, and that's only the ones and twos. What about the threes and fours? We've got, there's gotta be an approach. It's, it's not always perfect. Manager Mermis. Yeah, two other points I thought I'd, I'd like to mention is that um, number one, you'll see with the upcoming ward, or the current ward two and three, uh, really whole western portion of town stormwater project that Mr. Floor also mentioned, that is going to take up half of your CIP every single year for like the next 20 to 30 years. So half of the CIP is already going to that project. It didn't used to be like that with previous CIPs. That's why we have to analyze and do the best we can with the road program. The other thing to consider is some of the streets that uh, we mentioned tonight are in the industrial park 15 or 20 years ago we did a special service area to repair those streets. So that's also an option that can be considered. Alderman Jacob. A uh, question for Mr. Fleur. Uh, we just recently, and Jeff, maybe you could 
I know we recently started putting that, uh, spraying that topping onto some of the streets to help extend the life of that. So I guess my question to Mr. Fleur is, is that, is it worth spending the money to do that? How, is, is that actually going to save the streets and extend the times eventually? Are you referring to reclamite? Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. yeah. I, I'm a big advocate for reclamite. I think it's a, it's um, proven by independent research to extend the life of a pavement as so long as it's um, installed at the appropriate time. There's some communities that will actually install that the same year that a road is pa is paved. Um, but certainly within you know a three to seven year uh, age of the pavement uh, is probably where you're going to get the best bang for your buck with that reclamite. Follow up. Yeah, just one more question. Um, maybe Mr. Lane could answer this. What do you know when we started that reclamate project? Was that just a couple of years ago, or Mr. Mermis? Go ahead. It was, I'd say two. It could have been three, but it was no more than three. So okay. two or three years ago. And, and then just one more follow-up from Mr. Fleur. How long before that will start saving some of the, you know, start extending the time where this will start changing this, this whole pattern of these streets? I mean, if we're doing it now to protect the streets. Well, well the idea with the reclamite is it restores a lot of the asphalt that is lost to oxidation and sunlight and other environmental factors. And so if you remember that, that curve, the way that a pavement um, ages, you know, what that's meant to do is kind of bend that curve back up and prolong that life. Um, so, you know, I think it's a matter of extending that average life. So maybe if you were only getting 12 to 15 years on pavement, the, you know, the idea with that reclamite is maybe you're stretching that out to 16, 17, 18 or more years of life for a relatively inexpensive cost. Go ahead. I would also note that the residents don't like the reclamite because it makes the street discolored for quite a bit of time, and then if it doesn't rain uh, or there's not enough traffic, it looks bad longer. So I typically get calls and yell that for that <laughs> too. <laughs> okay, that's that's the end of your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flores. Thank you. Okay, so next is approval, the final payment to R.W. Dunman Company for the 2019 street patching program in the amount not to exceed $130,204.05. Um, I'll make the motion. He second it. Any, any questions? Any questions? No questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Okay, that passes. Items to consider for future meetings. Bright Heart uh, Station Paint and Contract, that's November 14th. Any other uh, items to consider? Go ahead, uh, Manager. Uh, Robinson Engineering is going to come in on November 14th to give an update on the stormwater project. Okay. Good. Any other uh, items? No other items? I make a, um, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.